thing to understand about ancient Chinese mathematics is the way in which it differs from Greek mathematics. Unlike Greek mathematics, there is no axiomatic development of mathematics. The Chinese concept of mathematical proof is radically different from that of Greeks, yet one must not in any sense think less of it because of this. Rather, than, rather one must marvel at the Chinese approach to mathematics and the results to which it led. Chinese mathematics was, like their language, very concise. It was very much problem-based, motivated by problems of the calendar, trade, land measurement, architecture, government records, and taxes. By the 4th century BC, counting boards were used for calculating, which effectively meant that a decimal place valued number system was in use. It is worth noting that counting boards are uniquely Chinese and do not appear to have been used by any other civilization. Next, we're going to talk about a book. The most famous Chinese mathematics book of all time is the Zhu Zheng Suan Shu, or as it is more commonly called, the Nine Chapters on the Mathematical Art. The book certainly contains contributions to mathematics which have been made over quite a long period, but there is little in the original text to distinguish the precise period of each. This important work has come to came to dominate mathematical development and style for 1,500 years. Many later developments came through commentaries on this text, one of the first being by Zhu Wei, although this one has been lost. Another commentary that was really important was written by Liu Hui, who is the next mathematician we will talk about. Liu Hui is one of the most well-known ancient Chinese mathematicians. He gave more of a mathematical approach than earlier Chinese texts, providing principles on which his calculations are based. He found approximations to pi using regular polygons with 3 by 2 to the n sides inscribed in a circle. His best approximation of pi was 3.14159, which he achieved from a regular polygon of 3,072 sides. It is clear that he understood iterative processes and the notion of a limit. Liu also wrote Haidao Suanjin, which is the Sea Island Mathematical Manual, which was a, a originally an appendix to his commentary on chapter 9 of the 9 chapters on mathematical art. In it, Liu uses Pythagoras' theorem to calculate heights of objects and distances to objects which cannot be measured directly. This was to become one of the themes of Chinese mathematics. About 50 years after Liu's remarkable contributions, a major advance was made in astronomy when Yu Zi discovered the pre precession of the equinoxes. In mathematics, it was some time before mathematics progressed beyond the depth achieved by Liu Hui. So next, we will talk about another Chinese mathematician that made major mathematical advances, and his name is Qin Zhushao. He wrote his famous mathematical treatise, Shu Shu Zhuzheng, which is the mathematical treatise in nine sections, and that appeared in the year 1247. He was the first of the great 13th century Chinese mathematicians. This was a period of major progress during which mathematics reached new heights. The treatise contains remarkable work on the Chinese remainder theorem, gives an equation whose coefficients are variables, and, among other results, Heron's formula for the area of a triangle. Equations up to degree 10 are solved using the Ruffini-Homer method. The last thing we will talk about is ancient Chinese numerals and a couple of theories behind them. The first theory suggests that the symbols are phonetic. By this, we mean that since the number 9 looks like a fishhook, then perhaps the sound of the word 9 in ancient Chinese was close to the sound of the word fishhook. Again, the symbol for 1,000 is a man, so perhaps the word for 1,000 in ancient Chinese was close to the sound of the word for man. To take an example from English, the number 10 is pronounced 10. This sounds like hen, so a symbol for a hen might be appropriate. A second theory about the symbols comes from the fact that numbers and in fact all writing in this late Shang period were only used as a part of religious ceremonies, so the numbers in religious had, in religion settings had significance. And that's some ancient Chinese mathematics. Thanks for watching.